I want to end tonight's show by talking about gratitude. And this story begins many, many years ago when I was a young pup in comedy. And I was given the opportunity to open for a comedian who was about to become famous. You would not have heard of him at the time, but on a comedy circuit, we all knew, like, oh, he, he's got the heat. He, he's going to be the next big thing. He doesn't have to reach out and grab the golden ring. Hollywood is going to pluck him like the claw from Toy Story. The claw. They just take him and make him. And so I was excited. I was excited. I have this opportunity. I went to the comedy club. It was in a small town in central Illinois. And I went into the green room. And there was this soon-to-be-famous comic, and I'm a little nervous, and I stuck my hand out and said, Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm your opening act. I can't read minds, but I can read faces and body language. And what he did was he looked at me, looked at my hand, sort of had a who-the-fuck-are-you expression on his face, and then turned away and sort of left me hanging. And I felt kind of stupid and backed out of the green room and left. Not the comedy club, just the green room. And that was our only interaction of the entire weekend. I would get on stage, tell my jokes. He would get on stage and complain about how his wife and daughter were a pain in his ass and he hated them. And then after that weekend, it all came true. I mean, he, he got a TV show, it got canceled, he got another one, he started winning the Emmys, he was a critic's darling, the funniest comedian in the world. He was hosting Saturday Night Live. And I'm not proud of this, but every single time I would see him, I would, I would see just a little. I'd see his picture, I'd watch his success as I struggled to get booked and, and, and get into rooms, and he was just taking off, and I'd be like, I'd, I'd get angry. Not proud of it, but that's what would happen. Then the Me Too movement hit, and icons started falling. Assholes like Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein, and female comedians started speaking out about this guy, saying that when they opened for him, he would say, hey, you want to hang out? And they would say, wow, you're famous. Yeah, maybe you can help my career. I'll hang out with you. And they would sit down and hang out, maybe in a green room. Maybe they'd hang out, and they'd ask him back to his hotel, and he'd say, all right, um, you want to watch me masturbate? He'd whip his penis out and he'd start jerking off in front of him. And if that wasn't bad enough, the following Monday, his manager would call them and say, if you tell anyone, I will destroy your career. Okay, first of all, um, quick aside, that kind of explains my weekend with him and it makes me feel a little better about it. Like, <laughs> if, if his fetish is cheating on his wife by jerking off in front of female comics and I walk in, hey, I'm the opener, I'm Nathan, he's like, ah, oh, fuck, you know? <laughs> I've ruined his weekend, that's on me, I'm sorry. Yeah. But, like before, I wasn't proud of this, but he lost everything. Hollywood canceled all his shows, he, he had a movie that was supposed to come out, he got taken out of that, and I sort of went, you know, a little Nelson Muntz. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I celebrated his failure. Not proud of it. Okay, that's the backstory. Here's the, here's the end. Uh, about a year ago, I was in St. Paul, Minnesota, playing a very small comedy club, only held 70 people. And the Friday show went great. I was all excited for Saturday. Go walking in. Saturday is pretty much sold out. I am in a good mood. I'm just looking around so happy. I am the headlining comic, and my opening act comes up to me and says, isn't this great? I say, yeah, this is amazing. And then he says, it is amazing that all these people came out to see you, a nobody that's not famous, when across town at the other comedy club, there is a famous comic getting paid tens of thousands of dollars. It's the club that won't work you because you've never been on TV. That's not what he said. That's what I heard. <laughs> he just said there's a famous comic at the other club. And I, I heard the rest. And of course it was the guy from my past. He got canceled, but he was still selling out comedy clubs and making tens of thousands of dollars where I'd get a couple hundred dollars. And for a moment, for a split second, I, I, just, I slid, I snapped, I started going back, and I went, mm, that fucking guy. And then I caught myself. I actively had the thought, wait a second, wait a second. A moment ago, you were in a good mood. What changed? Nothing. I got information that didn't matter to me at all. I heard about something someone else was doing. And I realized, oh, I have a decision to make. I can be angry and bitter about what I don't have, 
or I can be grateful for what is right in front of me. And I... And then I remembered my Hamlet. There is nothing that is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. There is nothing that is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. I had an audience there to see me. I have a wife that I love. I have kids that I love. I love my life. And I may have four fingers and a thumb, <laughs> but I can get my billy on like nobody's business. So that's what I decided to do. So thank you for coming out tonight and seeing a comic you've never heard of. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. I hope you had fun. Have a good finish to your weekend. Have a good finish to your life if I don't see you again. Good night. <laughs>